the assistant coach is a real pivotal yeah, role. Sure. It's not like, and I'm not, you know, to any assistant coach out there, I'm saying it's not. Um, what a lot of people think, it's like the gopher of the, of the coach, it's not at all. And I, I never thought it was, no. but it's like, it's a very pivotal role because you're the guy that people go to. Yeah. You're the guy doing a lot of the legwork. Yeah. Um, and the head coach has to delegate and do, but how, what makes a great assistant coach? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So, uh, so one is um, um, trust, you know, so you, you need to, um, you know, um, uh, I suppose build trust in your head coach, you know, to, de to delegate to you, you know what I mean? Like I think all head coaches, um, you know, should delegate, need to delegate different roles. So you need to earn the trust of the head coach. So that's, that's the first thing you need to, the second thing is you need to disagree and commit. If that makes sense. It's a good yeah. little saying I got out of uh, one of the um, American sporting clubs I, I went to. And effectively what it means is you don't have to necessarily agree with the coach. You know, so you, you need to challenge the head coach and you need to give your opinion. Um, but you know what, at the end of the day, the head coach makes the final decision. So when the head coach makes that final decision, you might have disagreed with it and you might have given your opinion, but you need to commit to whatever the decision the head coach has, has made. And I think that makes a good assistant coach as well. I think thirdly, uh, assistant coach is really key in your, in your club because um, they've almost um, um, got, uh, I suppose, that rapport with, with the playing group, if that makes sense. You know, look, uh, a lot of players are sort of comfortable coming and, and sharing concerns or, or uh, trying to use the assistant coaches to get better as players, you know what I mean? Um, often, you know, players will see the head coach as the big bad boss in, in some ways, and, and it's not like that in every environment, but I think the assistant's got a really key role to, to play in, in building positive relationships between the, the staff and, and, um, and the playing group. So there's some really key things. I think the other one is, um, and it's in whatever industry, um, work ethic. If you don't have a work, if you think you just want, like I see a lot of ex players, not a lot of ex elite players, I'm sure you guys see it in your sport as well. Every I think, day. I think, I know, I know footy. I know footy and I was a good footy player, so I'm going to be a good coach because I know footy. But uh, there's a couple of things that come with that. Um, if you're not thorough with, with what you do and, and you don't have a work ethic, you're not going to make it as an assistant coach because um, it's long hours and the devil's in the detail, so to speak. So you've got to watch a lot of vision, you've got to review a lot of training sessions, you've got to be real well planned. And it's not what you know, it's what the players know, if that makes sense. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. If you know. I always think of coaching like this is like, if I know 10 units, 10 units of football, and you know 12, but my players, I can get them to know eight, and you can only get yours yeah, to know three. So. Who cares what you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. not what you know. And I reckon there's a lot of, um, I've done a lot of um, research on um, in EPL clubs, you know, English Premier League clubs, and they, for a long time, uh, went down the route of hiring excellent players as their managers and they were good they were good you know very elite players but they didn't know how to manage people they didn't know how to plan they didn't know how to review they didn't know how to give feedback um, because when you're a player if you if i'm a senior player and i say something to the rest of the group the, the players will listen but if you're an assistant coach and you don't know how to help the player the players will stop listening if that makes sense yeah. you know what i mean so um yeah, like I think, um, yeah, I see a lot of uh, um, players come to the role or ex players come to the role thinking, you know, oh, it's great to be involved. You know, we train for an hour on the field and, you know, they do their gym and then we're home by lunch. It's not like that. You know, like the staff here, uh, like I'm in every day, I leave home every day, quarter to five, five o'clock at the latest. I'm here by 5.30 at the very latest. Well, Peter Janel and Dave Ferner, who my assistants, they're coming in, if not similar time, 15, 20 minutes later than me. And then we all live here about you know six o'clock, six thirty at night time. You know what I mean? So they're long days. You, you, there's a lot of detail on what you got to do, but that's you know that's what you got to do to be successful. And I've had pretty good mentors along the way. You know, like Belly Aiken and, and the crew of guys I worked with down at, at the Storm were um, had an incredible work ethic, but they were very thorough. So it wasn't work for work's sake. It was you know very detailed. And there's some um, yes, yeah, I was really lucky that I've had some good mentors. What makes a good head coach, a great head coach? Um, well, that's a difficult one for me to, to, to answer, you know. I'm, but you've had some good ones. I've had some really good ones. I'm sure yeah. you've had bad ones. We don't have to name yeah. it. But. No, well, I, you know, yeah. so, so Craig Bellamy, I mean, everyone obviously knows who Belliak is. Um, 
So the things I saw in him were, were um, there's a couple of things. One, he had a terrific work ethic. Like um, he's very thorough. Like he, um, he talk about being detailed, very detailed, particularly watching the opposition, uh, what, what trends are going to uh, come. Um, on the weekend, I know he had agreed a, pattern recognition. Yeah, pattern stuff, recognition. Yeah. yeah, trends. Yeah. yeah, looking at trends. He's very, very um, thorough with, with, with his trends. But you know what? He cared. And I'll just I'll share a little example. And, and I remember this. And um, you know, you, I'm sure you've had it with some bosses that you know, or coaches that have just they've um, lit a flame in you that you, you want to do. You want you want to go that extra mile. They, in Amer in business world in America, they call it the discretionary effort. You know, there's that 10 percent or 15 percent discretionary effort. You know. And I was, uh, you know, ballet. And it can go the other way and too. And it can go the other way. And, and I'll give you an example. So, so just when my kids have been sick, and, and say for instance, the race off from work, there was two times I had to do that. Um, one, we were, we were playing. I was with the Storm. We played Penrith at Penrith, and we're sitting in a hotel on Tuesday morning. We played a Monday night game there. I get a phone call from um, a, a, a babysitter who used to look after the kids um, um, of a morning, and um, my middle girl. Um, had had, um, had a fit and you know I'm thinking shit you know I've got, I've got to get back to Melbourne so you know the club started I got me on the next flight I get back there she's in hospital and everything was okay in the end but you know it gives you a big fright well um, that night you know Bella gives you a call just how is everything you know make sure you take as, as you know, as long a time off that you need, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's your priority. There's another time I was at training and uh, was with the NRL team um, coming into a big semi final that weekend, and, and my other daughter had uh, fainted at school. And um, I got a phone call and said, Listen, she's fainted at school, she had to go and do some blood tests, and um, her uh, white blood cell uh, level was quite high. So, oh. so we had to get some more tests. Well, that I sort of, you know, you know as you do, you know, yeah, yeah. You just even when you said it then, I was yeah, just saying, yeah. Shit, you know, well, this is serious. So, who rings up, you know, that night, you know, just say, how is everything, what do you need, you know, and everything was, you know, very fortunate, everything was, was, was fine, you know what I mean, it was just a virus and, and, but they just needed to do some extra testing because the, the, the cell care, and that, that, that's, that sort of stuck out to me, and Frank Benisi, who was the, the director of football down there, he was very similar, you know, like, I mean, they, they cared about you as a person first, and I reckon one of the lessons I've learned as a coach is, you know, it's not what you know, you know, it's not what I know about X's and O's, um, obviously, I need to produce a team that's competitive with their performances, and in a lot of ways, that's judged on wins and losses, you know. And I understand that that's the nature of, of professional sport. But um, you know, building positive relationships with players, um, developing players to become better players, um, and having a, a, an effective game model—they're they're a couple of things. But relationships with the players, for me, is is at the top of the list. Um, you know, and all the research and all the professional development I've done, you know, it's sort of. Um, if you don't, if you don't um, build positive relationships with the players and your other staff, well, they're not going to have that discretionary effort that's required. And, and um, you know, you look at, um, oh, I went to Google recently in, in New York and spent um, a day there, and um, um, the workers there all kept telling me, come back to the same point, um, we'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. If it means working back later, or whatever, because Google looked after us so well, like the the, the employees there, um, and it's a big multinational company as you were, it's it's mad, but 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 the the, the company makes them so um, it feels so valued that they want it. They'll they'll work the extra mile. They'll work the extra few hours because you know they get fed really well. And, you know, there's a gym there that they can use, and there's all these different things that look after the well-being and the welfare of the of the employees. So, uh, for me, relationships are, uh, you know, first and foremost, and um, having a, um, a positive relationship is a real key. And I think I'll, I'll say one other thing about this. The other thing is that I, th I think you talk about what's a, uh, an effective head coach. In my research, in my professional development, the very, very best head coaches, and, and, and Balak's one of these guys, they serve the players, not the other way around. Very good. And, That's... and um, I think head coaches who become arrogant or head coaches who don't last in the, in the, in the role for too long or head coaches who um, put their ego first aren't serving the, uh, aren't serving the, the, the players. At the end of the day, people come to watch the South Sydney Rabbitohs not because of, of me. Um, they come to watch because of the 13 heroes we put out on, or the 17 heroes we put out on the field every single week. Now, of course, my job is to prepare them the best as possible, but um, my job is to serve them. You know, my job is to, to give them the best environment over there that we can to prepare as best we can 
Um, and there's going to be some challenging days, there's no doubt about that, I understand that, I've been around footy for a long time. Um, but that's my job, I'm there to serve them. And um, you know, that's one thing that you talk about what, you know, what the very best do. I saw that with, with Craig at the Storm. I saw, I saw it the last few years with Kevin Wilders at Queensland Origin level, you know. Um, and you know, I've, as I said, I've had some good mentors and taken away some really key things. Well, I find it um, interesting that in all the stuff then that you spoke, and I agree, and I, I agree, but I find it interesting that in all the stuff that we just spoke about then, I could be mistaken maybe, but football you barely mentioned, mm. like football, like, because I, I mean, it's a given that you have to have like yeah. a technical knowledge, you're yeah. not going to get, my mum has all those qualities, yeah. but she's not going to be a rugby league coach. But um, I find it interesting that the, the qualities that you were talking about was not the technical knowledge, yeah. was not all of the other stuff. It was based around people management and your ability to deal with people. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to paraphrase you. Yeah. But um, one of the questions then, I suppose, Dave, do you have anything on that? Because I mean, like you're, you know, we, we I kind of want to segue into teaching and whatnot. Oh uh, no, just everything around that. It's, it's. I agree with Fab. Like the essence of it is around relationships. Yeah. Making sure that you know your staff are happy. Yeah. I manage a, a wicked team, and everything you said, and around even the, around the assistant coach and their role being clear around yours. So like it actually, um, in terms of organizational management whether it's at a ceo level or whatever the it, the, the same structure is cascading it's really interesting yeah. that, seeing that in relation to rugby league and how you manage a team of 13 players which is the same as yeah. 13 staff well like, yeah you well, have more even because yeah. you've got yeah. coaches more, and yeah. staff yeah yeah, yeah. we've well, 36 full-time players and, and the plus the staff that's probably like 45 people yeah players. plus yeah um do you guys have you guys heard of todd sampson at all um, no. T- Todd's done a couple of documentaries, which the listeners would be worth um, having Todd a look. Simpson. Yeah. So he's on, uh, some of you guys might have heard of um, The Gruen uh, yep. Project, which is on ABC. He's one of the guys who sits at the end of the desk. Okay. Uh, he used to be the CEO of, of Leo Burnett, an um, advertising agency. Right. He's now on the board of Fairfax um, and Qantas. Well, you know, now that you say, yeah, 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 you probably know. And, I, and, I've heard of yeah, him. Like and I, the yeah. documentaries he's done. He actually did one. Uh, he trained as a UFC fighter. Um, <laughs> you, you may have seen it. Yeah, uh, I, I you should have a look. Vaguely, at it. Yeah. you know what so, I mean. So, the um, body hack um, um, is one of the, the series. Um, Rewire my brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. A few different things. But he actually trained as a UFC fighter for two weeks and had a fight. Uh, had his. Uh, jaw broken. Yeah, I saw him. I yeah. saw that. And anyway, um, he's really don't ever do that. No, it's with David. no. <laughs> he's actually a really interesting character. So you know what? Uh, and I'm like this. Um, as I sort of um, got a little bit older, I sort of got a bit bolder. I just contacted him out of the blue. I found his email address through a, through a, a, um, a friend of mine, and um, he emailed him and said, "Good day, Todd. Anthony Seabold here. Just got the head coach role at Rabbitohs. Really admire what you do. Um, I love creative people. Can I catch up for a coffee?" So just before Christmas, he had a bit of time. I went and caught up with him in Bondi, and um, man, I spent about four or five hours with him. He's just a really creative guy. Just and like he knows nothing about footy, so mate, I don't know how I can help you. I said, "You can help me a lot, mate." You know what I mean? Um, let me talk more about it. And anyway, so I went and met him. And, and long story short, we had an unbelievable conversation for about four or five hours. And uh, there was there was uh, one thing I took away. When he got the job as the CEO of Leo Burnett, they're a big American company, and. Um, um, they sort of put him up in front of the, all the, the big wigs over there, and the Stacey was telling me. And um, they said, okay, what's important to you, Todd? And he, he told me, he said, um, well, in this order, uh, people, product, and profit. They're the three key things that I'm going to bring to the CEO role in Australasia. And they went, oh, okay. Um, how about you just move number three up three to number one? Yeah. Flip <laughs> yeah. yeah. the whole thing around. Yeah. That's what we want. And, and move uh, every every um, every one down. And he said, well, if you want me to do that, you've got the wrong person. Um, and so going back to you know I was talking before about relationships and that you know even at that highest end business world he was all about people and he challenged me something that I, I went away and did he challenged me he said for all your he said how many players you got in your group and I said 36 he said um, if I said now if I pull out a pen and paper because I had notes and I'm scribbling and he said if, if I pulled out a pen and paper there could you write down the ignition or the purpose or the motivation of every one of your players in your squad and I went he put me on he put me right on the spot and I said shit mate I said um, I said I reckon I'd probably be really confident for about 10 blokes 
Which is good, man. Yeah. No, oh, so you even have that? Yeah. But honestly, to uh, have that for 10 people, yeah. Oh, like... Yeah, yeah, no, I thought I thought out of the 36 hours, yeah. you know, and he said, well, you got 26 bucks who you mm. work with, who you influence, who you um, need performing at their best for you that you need to get to know better. I mean, shit, like, you know, like he sort of, he put me on, on the back foot a little bit. So one of the first things I did after that, I... Um, I met with every player and, and we had a, I already had a plan to meet every player with what I call an IPP, which is an individual performance plan. Uh, got the idea through the All Blacks and it's a really effective way to um, you know, give feedback and, and so on. But anyway, part of that review was I asked three questions. What's your purpose slash ignition slash motivation to play you know, rugby league? Um, what's going to be a challenge for you and what can I do for you as a coach? You know, so how can I serve you for, for you to get better? And that were the three questions I asked. And it was one of the most um, productive. It, it took me a week to get through all 36, as you'd appreciate, because we we're training as well and, and we had our own you know, um, video reviews and whatever else. But it took me a week to, to do all, all 36 players. But it was the, it's been the best thing that I've done so far because I've got to know what, you know, Fab, what your motivation is, what's going to be a challenge for you this year, and then what you need from me. And for a lot of the guys, it was, I just want you to be honest and give me feedback. That's what I need from you. You know what I mean? Don't beat around the bush, just give, give me feedback. You know, and I won't go on what the motivations were or, or, or um, what the challenges were, but it was a, it was a fascinating insight. And, and as I said, Todd poked me um, and said, well, you've got 26 boys, you know, who you, who you need to know better. So I spent a lot of time um, you know, investing in relationships and I know that's not football and people, you know, who watch this or are Rabideau supporters, they're, they're going to know, well, what are you going to do from a footy point of view? Well, you know, we've worked a lot on the X's and O's. I, I, think, I think it's a given. That, that's you, a given. You know how to play, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a given, mate. You know, and my experiences of having worked with Melbourne Storm, um, you know, and the players and, and the coaching group they've got there, my experiences of work with Queensland Origin so for the last two years, you know, with Kevin Walters and, and the playing group they've got there, um, you know, I know footy, but me knowing footy and, and being able to coach footy is not, um, um, you know, going to give us um, a better season. But if I know the players a little bit better and know what um, motivates them individually and what challenges they've got and um, what they need from me and how I can serve them, then we're more of a chance of, of um, doing better things this year, in my opinion, in any case.